uh, it's so good to see you. So good to be with you. I know I've already said it, but I, I mean it so much. And I know she's already said it, but if you're, if you're a first-time guest, whether it's your first time watching online, first time in-house, uh, this is a big deal to us. We're truly, truly honored that you're here. And um, I, I do just want to say next week, it was supposed to be this week, but, um, but well, you know why. Uh, but next week, we're going to have our seven-year anniversary celebration. Seven years of God's faithfulness. Seven, come on, let's give it up for what God has done. Um, but we're, we're, we're so excited to celebrate. Honestly, here's the, I, I didn't cancel because of just the weather, I canceled because you couldn't have cake ready. And that just seemed wrong to have a party without cake. So there's going to be some good cake next week. And I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to be keto cake. So bring your own if you're on low carb or something like that. Uh, but it's going to be so good. Come and join us. Invite somebody with you. we got some little cards that you can pick up at the connections table that just say, see you next Sunday. It's a quick little easy thing that we can invite people with. But we're continuing in the, in the series that we have been in. And wouldn't you know this week, I pivoted what the, what the conversation was going to be today, right? I, I, I uh, had to try to figure out what we were going to talk about. And I was talking with Chris and we're like, I said, bro, I don't even know what I'm preaching on, man. Like much less, like my body temperature is at about 40 degrees. I don't, I don't, my brain function isn't there. So uh, we talked about this and I think it's a great, a great topic, but we're continuing in the same thing. It's about time. Anybody said that this week? It's about time, like your lights begin to flicker on. You're like, oh, it's about time. And then 10 minutes later, they went back off. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, man, that was fun. Uh, how about whenever the temperature outside got above 30? Like, it's about time. You know, like I used to think that 30 was cold. Dill got four outside. Then I'm like, I'm walking outside and 30 was like shorts on. I'm on my undies and no shirt. I like to no big deal. I don't even care. Uh, man, it's just like so so nice. It's a little bit warmer outside, but it's about time. But really, isn't it? Like, in, in the big scheme of things, in the big scheme of life, uh, it's about time. We're given a certain amount, and, and we just know the predicament of life. We don't know what's going to happen week to week. There could be a Texas blizzard. Um, it's about time. We're given a certain amount. We're given some moments, and, and so we want to make sure the moments that we have are, are made the most of. Right? And so we've been looking at this scripture in Ephesians chapter 5, 14 through 17 as our base scripture and as our theme throughout, throughout this, um, this series. And I want to read it again. It says, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16, I've got it bolded in my notes here, making the most. So we're going to, that's where we're going to spend the thought of today, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Make the most, like get the most out of it, right? Um, anybody with me on this? Like, I don't, I'm kind of frugal. People have been known to call me cheap, okay? Um, but I'm going to squeeze, I'm, I'm going to squeeze like 10 cents out of two pennies if I can. You know what I mean? And, and here's, here's where I can really see this played out in practice is that toothpaste thing. Right? I'm going to roll that baby up. I'm going to squeeze it from the bottom to the top, and I may even cut it to scrape out. I bought that toothpaste, and I'm going to get out every little bit. I'm not throwing that in the trash can. We're going to get every bit of the tooth. I'm going to smush it, roll it, whatever I got to do to get the most. Anybody with me? Anybody else like? Or you're like, ah, it gets a little gunk on the outside. You're like a throw it away kind of person. Like, no, man. Like, we, we, we're like getting everything. But I think that's what we need to do in life. Like, I think it's a great illustrative uh, picture for, like, we, we need to take every moment that we have, and let's squeeze the most out of it. Like, let's get the most. I, I, I just feel like that is the theme of what Paul's trying to say here and make the most. Like, squeeze that toothpaste container of your life in this moment, and let's get the most out of it. Whether, whether it's a moment you're stuck in the house with your kids because of corona or because of whatever happened, like, let's make the most. Let's squeeze it out. Um, I think to make the most to get the most out, squeeze the most out. It's going to require seeing every, every moment that we're in as an opportunity, as, as a moment of opportunity that's preparing us for what God has next for us. It's time. Like, it's, it's time in life. It's, it's time. What we're going to talk about today is it's time to prepare. It's time to get prepared. 
Anybody felt a little unprepared this week? So they came on the news and I saw on the Weather Channel, it's going to be like seven degrees. I did not know what that meant. Like, oh, we can do, I mean, I got heater on the inside. Our, our, you know, our house did not know what that meant. Seven degrees, four degrees. I think it wound up being like three or four. Did anybody get lower than that? It's like three or four degrees at my house. And I'm just telling you, that's not spiritual. I know they say hell is hot, but I think it might be freezing cold. I don't know. Man, it was, it was tough. But it's time to prepare. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, next time that they say a winter storm is coming, I'm going to go through it differently. Anybody with me? There are going to be some things I do differently. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that we got more blankets. I'm going to make sure, although I am grateful that I've got a wife that about a week out said, hey, you think we should get some firewood? Because me, I'm thinking, no, oh, we're good. It ain't going to be that cold. The heater's going to be on. Thank you for buying lots of blankets I thought were pointless. Like why we have a blanket in every room and a box full of blankets. That was amazing. You're awesome. And to go get firewood. But next time, I'm going to be more prepared. Preparation. What is preparation? It's doing what you can, everything that you can to be ready. Doing what you can to be ready. Now, preparation um, isn't usually that fun thing, right? It's not like an exciting word. Let's go prepare. Nobody's lining up for the prep work. You know what I'm talking about? Like, hey kids, we're going on vacation. Woo! We're at the door, like. But nobody's lining up to pack the bags and to make sure all the clothes are washed and to get the house clean. Anybody else clean before you leave because you want to come back to a clean house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nobody's lining up for the prep work because it doesn't feel sexy. It doesn't feel fun. It feels like, I don't want to do all that. But without the prep work, we, we, we don't get what, to where we want to be. We don't get to what the result that we're wanting. See, our culture... Uh, elevates instant validation, right? We've got duck lips and we've got posts and a, and a filter for everything so that you can get more clicks, more likes, more views, right? Instant validation. And it underrates and undervalues true preparation in life. Truly being prepared. It's instantly what can happen, but undervalues is real prep work. I was watching Survivor Man the other day, and I was watching an interview with him, and, and it was interesting, the things that he does and all the things that he, that he puts in his go bag and his survival bag. This guy's thinking about every single detail of survival, right? He does the prep work. God has purpose prepared for each of us. I, I fully, truly believe that, and I've said this so many times in this context, but you, you're, you're not created, and then God tries to figure out what your purpose is. You have a purpose, so he created you. And that's totally different for us to understand. Like, you exist because you have purpose to fill. Like, like you're created with purpose. And the moments that you're given, the moments that we live through, it, it matters. Our moments matter. But I, I truly believe that before we can get to where, to where what God has prepared for us, he has to actually prepare us. Okay, before we can get to where God has prepared for us to go, he has to prepare us to get there. But most of us, we're not willing to be prepared to get where God has us to go. Our hearts just aren't ready. See, the, 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 the test on Monday, like, I don't know, is there school Monday? I don't know. I don't, I don't I look, yeah. Uh, the, the test on Wednesday or next Friday or whatever, it's not passed or failed on Friday. It's today through the study. The, the house, like, it doesn't just stand or fall in the storm. It's when they're building it. Like, the diet, oh, gosh, I don't even want to talk about that, man. I've been, like, nutter butters and, like, man, it's been cold, right? I got to get warm, pad up, right? <sighs> the diet is not, not accomplished or, or lost in the moment of the, the Cheeto bag staring at me. It's in the shopping and the prepping. The battle isn't won or lost on the battlefield when the sword is drawn. It's when they're forging the sword and whenever you're training on how to use it. Right. It's not just the moment. It's the preparation for what 
what is coming. And I think that God's wanting to prepare us for some incredible things. And the question is maybe, are we ready for what God is wanting to do? Have we, have we done the prep work for the result that we want? Now, if you ever watch any professional sports, um, as, I, as I call them, the sports, uh, I don't watch much. I do like some fighting. I, I like to watch interviews with fighters, MMA fighters and, and boxers, because I just think it's interesting. When I first started watching it, honestly, it just looked like a couple of dudes with just not very much clothes on, like punching each other. Um, but you don't realize like how much work goes in a fight. They don't just show up one day and be like, you know what, bro? I think I want to fight today. Like, and then you show up in the ring and whatever happens, happens. It's an incredible amount of work that goes into it. There's a lot of, lot, lot of training. There's an entire team of people um, to all make the moment happen. I realized something that the fight really isn't one in the ring. It's one in the gym. Yeah, the fight's not one when they've got the gloves on, it's, it's one when they're doing the jump rope and they're on the treadmill. The fight is one in the gym. The fight is really one in the pre-fight, in the setup, in the prep work. And so I was reading this scripture. Man, it just started beginning to speak to me and God began to show me some things. It's in Matthew chapter 3, 9, I mean 3 through 9, 13, 3 through 9. And Jesus says this, start off, says, listen. If Jesus says, listen, we better we better listen. He said, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. The birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlining rock. The seeds sprouted up quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted with the hot sun. Since they didn't have any deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on the fertile soil. And they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. All of these results were different, right? Each one of them had a different result of what happened. Only, only one seed actually became what it was intended to be. Act, only one seed actually fulfilled the potential. They were all scattered. They were all ready, but only one seed actually fulfilled the potential of what was inside of it. See, I think there's such potential on the inside of us, but, but where it's planted in our lives, we don't give the seed of what God is wanting to do, the ability to really grow into what he's wanting to flourish inside of us. Only one seed. See, there was only really one variable in the story. There's the same farmer, I just picture some dude in his overalls, right, out there. The same exact seed. It's all the same. It's all the same crop. It's all the same seed. He's just out there scattering. There's really only one variable. It was the soil. The problem was the soil, not the seed. And so when you look at the story and you read it and you, and you look a little bit further down, Jesus actually begins to explain the story because his disciples go up to him and say, Jesus, I don't understand what in the world you were talking about. So he explains it. And we see that the seed is the word of God. The seed is, is God's kingdom and what, what God is wanting to do. The seed is the, 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 the purpose potential of each person that God has placed. That's the seed. It's, it's the work of God. That's the seed. Come on. And, and, and like God's planting a seed in each, each person's heart. The soil, though, that's you and me. That's us. That's our hearts. We're the soil. And most of our hearts, I think, most of our lives just aren't ready to receive. We're not prepared to receive what God is wanting to do in our lives. He's wanting something to flourish, but instead, maybe we haven't prepared the ground for God to do what he wants to do. Like we all want results, right? We all want the vacation without cleaning the underwear. We all want we all want the great marriage without anything else that supports that. We all want the, the happy family and the good finances, the joy-filled life. We, we all want supportive friends, et cetera, et cetera. Like you, you, you fill in the blank, like you name it. We all want those things, don't we? We want the prize without the prep work. Well, 
I do. Maybe we all, you won't admit it, but I would love to. That's why I go to restaurants. I don't want to chop onions. I don't want to be there at 6 a.m. getting all. I want to just go eat and let them do the dishes. You know what I'm talking about? That's, why, that's really why we go. I want them to do the dishes. But like they're there when you drive by restaurants before they're open. There's cars in the parking lot, and they're chopping up tomatoes, and they're chopping up onions. They're getting it all ready. What's that called in your restaurant, people? The prep work. Right, you got the prep people that show up early to get it done. That's how we do it in life, man. We want the meal without chopping some onions, but we gotta do the prep work. So what happens is, if the prep work hasn't been done, if there's nothing below the surface, if we haven't prepared our hearts, then whenever life hits and life is difficult, the facade on the outside begins to crumble. The marriage struggles. The smile fades. The the, the whatever it is, because there's nothing deeper, there's been nothing to hold it together because, right, the fight is won not in the, 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 the ring, but in the gym. There hasn't been any, any prepping of our hearts. See, the victory is the result of the study hall, not the test room, the gym, not the ring, the training field, not the battlefield. So based on that idea, If the battle is won for what you've prepared for, what you've readied yourself for, what battles in your life are you prepared to win? Are you prepared to win in your marriage based on what you're investing in it, the groundwork and the prep work and what you're putting in? What is your life prepared to do? What what is your life prepared to withstand? Like we we drove we drove through uh, the road and I saw multiple these like beautiful carports that were beautiful like three days before, and and I saw cars crushed under them. Right? I mean, a lot of these are like metal and they're and these are incredible structures, but like they just weren't prepared for the amount of weight that ice and snow uh, were brought on them, so they got crushed under the weight. Like, what are you prepared to withstand in life? Because the one wrong thing happens and all of a sudden our faith is like no more. What are, what are, what are our hearts prepared to do? Like, when things don't look like they, they should be, we have to realize that it's just prep time for what it could be. Like, God is just, if, if we would change the way that we've seen, like, What if God is not punishing you or forgetting you, but he's actually preparing you for where he wants you to be? But in the midst of like difficulty and and struggle, what we do is we push God away. We put him at arm's length thinking he's a bad, mean God. And he's actually trying to say, listen, if you'll just stick with me through this, I'm going to bring you somewhere, but I can't get you here unless I get you through right here. Like I'm preparing you. This is the prep time. This is the cutting the onions. And sometimes you cry a little bit. It's the prep. Doesn't seem fun. Nobody lines up to do it. But the prep work, the preparation, it matters. Here's what I think, and I've had to confront this in my own life and ask, ask God to help me. I think most of our faith is far too shallow for a real battle. I'll say it towards a different church. I think most of our faith is far too shallow for a real battle. That was whoever is that way. Forgive me, whatever church is that way. I mean, but like, oh, not us. But I think that it's true the first time that it really slams and hammers. We're we're just like, all of a sudden, God doesn't love me. But he does. I I love this scripture in Proverbs 21, 31. See, because I never want to advocate for it's like what we do and it's our work and you better prep and that's that's what's gonna win it. It's all our trust and our faith and our hope in God. God is who wins the battle. But what we do and what we prepare in our hearts matters. Proverbs 21, 31 says, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. What in the world? I ain't got no horse. It says, The victory belongs to God, but put gas in the car. Right? I mean, it's like the victory ultimately is going to be God's, but make sure the saddle and the sword is on the horse. Like It's prepared for battle, but ultimately the victory is God's. But is there some prep work that's ours? 
God, why are you not there? You didn't go to the gas station. It's not my fault you ran out. We blame God because we had a flat tire, but we haven't changed them in six years, and they, 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 they look like inner tubes. And that's God's fault. Maybe there's some prep work to get the result that we are desiring, prepping, prepping. God's wanting to move in your life. I'm convinced. I'm, I'm just... I'm convinced that God is wanting to move in, a, in an awesome way this year. I, this, is, this, can, this can be the greatest year of your life. I do. It can, it can be the greatest year in your marriage, in your family. But too many of us haven't trusted God enough to see it come to pass. You look at all the stories in the Old Testament. Oh, uh, man, we read the results, right? Like, David, become king. That's awesome. All these things. But you, you forget the prep work that it took in their hearts and lives to get them to the place of the result that God wanted to bring in them. The full potential of their life took David 20 years taking care of sheep when he was underappreciated and undervalued. Joseph saving an entire nation, an entire really world at that time, to be honest, took years and years of slavery and imprisonment. Who wants that? (laughs) Maybe God is preparing us. Maybe God is preparing us. There's my, I I have to show this. See, I have a shirt and a cup that says, um, basically, basically warning anything that you do and say could be used in a sermon. Uh, And that's, that's, so we stayed at the in-laws and we were, we were getting like prepped and showered and cleaned up there because we ain't got no water yet. Now it needed to smell good for you. Um, and so on, on Karen's door, I don't show it yet, um, the, the, the pre-story is she's left her house, and she's not here today to get the full scope of this story, but she's watching online. I hope I have permission to telling it anyways because you're not here to protest. Um, so she's walked out of her house multiple times throughout the day and has looked down. She had two different shoes on. Like, she said multiple times. And so what she has on her door before she leaves her house is, and check your shoes. I love it. So I went over the first time. I'm like, Karen, why? Why is it? She's like, so I'll look down and make sure they match. And I'm like, okay. I mean, she's trying to get prepared for the day, right? She got her shoes on, but making sure they, they match. I, I, I just, I feel like we should, we should get a, a sign for our life, right? You just say, Eric, check your life. Check your heart. Make sure it matches up with what God is wanting to do in your life care and check your shoes. It's pretty funny. It's pretty. What's funny is she looks at that sign every day before she leaves the house. Like, it's for real. Like, we're good. I mean, we need to prepare the ground of our hearts so that what God is wanting to plant in your life can flourish. You've got to prepare the soil of your heart so that what God is wanting to plant in your marriage can flourish. What God's wanting to plant in your influence to the people around you can flourish. But we got to prepare our hearts to see it come to pass. Come on, I, I want God, I want the end of my story to be that 30, 60, 100 fold. Like God planted something, but what he planted became something so incredible because my heart was the kind of soil that God could plant something in and actually reach the full potential of what it was meant to be. Right? I, I think the story teaches us that Too many people, three quarters if the fractions are right there, are living far below their created potential. Far below their created potential. Some couldn't flourish because the ground just wasn't ready. It's time for some prep work. It's time for some prep work. Real quick, I just got three things before we we leave out that I want us to begin to prep. It's time to tear it up. Time to tear it up. First one said, some seed fell on the footpath. Um, Some seed was on hard soil. Man, it's been walked on. It's been trampled on. For years and years, it's been stepped on and walked to where now the ground is matted down and there's no softness for the seed to be able to go in the soil so nothing could grow out. It stayed just right on top, not received. So the birds came by and ate it up and it's gone. And I think a lot of us can be there. There's a lot of reasons that our hearts can grow hard. 
a lot of reasons that, I mean, and you can even look so good sometimes on the surface, but have just an incredibly hard heart. To where now that nothing that God wants to do and where God wants to bring you, nothing penetrates any deeper than the surface. And this can be hurt and pain, difficulty, our own, our own decisions, a life of sin that can, that can keep us pushing God away. And, and Jesus goes on to say, he says, it's a, it's a heart that hears but doesn't understand. That, that, that's a hard heart is one that, that hears but it doesn't understand what's being said. See, we all want the answers to our whys, don't we? We all have so many questions whenever we don't have all these things answered. A lot of times we just begin to doubt God and our hearts begin to grow hard. And, and you know what I've realized so many times though is the teacher doesn't tell you the full scope of the lesson while it's going on. Like, how many people, I'll never use math. Like, you're learning that in school, and then you get older, and you're like, man, I'm sure glad I know how to do fractions, right? I knew how to say three quarters. That was so smart of me. There's four things, three didn't, three quarters. I mean, that's school, right? They didn't t- tell me that I would learn, use that right here. But how many lessons are you learning that you don't know the full scope of it? And we have these questions, but because our hearts are hard, we don't allow God to teach us anything. Like, Mr. Miyagi, you're an idiot. Why in the world should I paint a fence? Why would I clean your car? He didn't realize he was prepping him to beat some dude up. You know what I'm talking about. I don't care what you say. That was not an illegal kick. Anything above a certain, the waist is, is, was, was a point, right? I mean, I'm just saying. I'll take up for him all day long trying to bash him on social lately, saying that the other guy was the good guy. It's not true. Mr. Miyagi, why? But that's what we do with God, right? See, if we aren't careful, what can happen is all of our hearts can grow hard. And we can still like wear the Christian t-shirt and come to church and sit in our seat and have a hard heart and not receive anything that God's wanting us to do. And so we stay in the same place, never letting anything grow, and always complaining about why nothing grows in our life, but it grows in their life. Because our hearts have grown hard, we've kept God at a distance, and we honestly, if we just, okay, you can be honest with me and with yourself, we just don't believe God anymore. Maybe on the outside. And so what we do is we grow stale and cynical and hurtful and hardened. That describes way too many church people. (laughs) Too many, man. And what he's wanting to grow inside of us is just kind of blown away. Now, a hard ground can be planted, but it's got to be broken up. It's got to be tilled. It's got to be broken. It has to be softened, right? We've got to dig some things up. And so here's my prayer for you. Would, would, would you. would you pray to God and say, God, would you soften my heart? God, are there areas that have been hurt that I need to forgive? God, would you forgive me? Humble yourself. Here, here's a sign of somebody with a hard heart. They want to complain about somebody else's field without working their own. Get on social media. I want to complain about your field, but not work on my own. Quit working somebody else's field and get the plow on your own. Say, God, soften my heart. God, do something in me. Like the scripture says, we look at the back in someone else's eye and don't realize there's this, there's this massive tree sticking out of ours and say, God, what... what, what Step outside of yourself and look and say, what, what, what about, what do I need to fix? Let God work in your life. Tear up that hardness. Second thing, it's time to get to the bottom. It said other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlining rock. It looks good. It grew up quick. It looks so pretty, but it did, didn't last. Right? Whenever life hit, whenever the sun came out, it, like, it withered up and it just died. Why? Because there were no roots down deep to attach to and to grow. Underneath, there was something different. Underneath, there were rocks. So I I, I went, we went a couple times to to, um, Honduras on a a mission trip. And I went one time, and I I like work mission trips. Now, that may surprise you that I like to work, but not at home so much, but on mission trips. Um, I'm not a big VBS or teaching kids like, you know, 
I have kids. I, I want to go do something different there. I'm just being honest. Like, I go there and like, what, what work do you have for us? And so he said, man, you know, I really need to build a fence. Um, a fence because we got animals and, and all that. And so I was like, bro, I got you. Like, I can build a fence. Um, and so he had some post hole diggers, and we're going we're gonna to dig some holes. I'm like, this is, this is super easy. I got this. And so I walk up to the ground with just like excitement in, 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 in my eyes. And I take the post hole diggers, and I go and just dink. Oh, gosh. Now, what I didn't realize is that every square inch of Honduras is rock. Literally. You think mountains are cool until you try to build a post hole in them. And so, like, on the surface, honestly, it looked good. I didn't know there were rocks. But, like, dink about an inch below the ground, just filled with rocks. And so here's what happened. Um, I got frustrated. My shoulders and my back began to hurt. I wanted to quit. Um, I went from excitement and enthusiasm to um, wanting to go home to America. Right? It just felt like I was working and working and no progress. I had to sit up there and, like, like get a, get a little shovel and get down there with my hands and pick out every single rock so that I could get. That was hard work. But how many of our lives are the same? We're up and down and up and down. And when life hits, we're down. And, and then God's good, and then he's not good, and then he's good. I mean, we, we need some lives where some roots can grow deep. And I think what the, the real problem is, if we get down below the surface, below what we say we believe, what do we really trust in? What's the bedrock of our life? And, and you can see what you trust in for whatever life hits what you cling to. And so there were rocks that were at the base that didn't give the opportunity for roots to grow. And, and too many believers have no roots. We got shirts and slogans and lingos and Christianese language, but no roots. Right? And so we've got to get down there and dig up and say, God, what is it that I'm trusting in? What is it that, honestly, if I'm real with myself, I've actually built my life on my own abilities, my job, the person in my life that makes me feel good. Like, what's the real base and, and, and the bedrock of my life? Ephesians 3.17 says, then Christ will make his home in your heart when, as you trust him. It said, then your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, Right? It's about trust. What do we trust in? That's where our, that's, that's what's going to, our roots are going to be in. So the seed looks so good. It was pretty, right? It's like, oh, look at that pretty flower. How oh, why is it dead? Right. There's no roots. No roots. If Christ isn't the foundation that our roots grow into, life is always going to be unstable. So if your life is up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Maybe ask yourself, what is what am I trusting in? What am I truly at the end? I gotta I gotta do some hard work, some real work, and say, let me get down deep and ask some tough questions of myself and say, what is it that I trust in? Where's where's the trust of my heart? And, and, and declaring and saying, God, I trust you. I trust you. It's easy to trust God when everything looks perfect and beautiful. It's hard to trust God when it requires trust to trust God. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody? Made sense in my head. When it requires trust, it's hard, baby. But what do you trust? Say, God, no matter what, I trust you. And that's a dangerous prayer. That's a dangerous prayer. It is. I'm telling you, because there's a lot of no matter what's in life. What do you trust him? It's time to rip it out. Rip it out. Other seeds fell among thorns and grew up and choked out the tender plants. Other things that were surrounding it, it grew up, but other things just choked it out. There was too much around it, too much around it. I honestly think this is probably where most of us are at. This is probably where most of my life is at. I just got too much distraction and too much care and worry in my life that it gets me off focus and not looking at God. I love God. And I think ultimately I always say I trust God, but sometimes I just don't look to him. Sometimes it's other things that I'm looking at. Sometimes it's I'm just worried about things in life, and sometimes it's just distractions. Sometimes it's just getting through the next episode of Netflix. Anybody with me? Thank God the Internet's back in some places. 
my kids, I think Zane was completely fine. Zane, wave your hands. This is my son, Zane. Wave your hands. Don't be, yeah. yeah, he don't, yeah. He was completely fine in like the 10 degree bedroom, bundled up. He was complaining about the internet. I want to get on my switch. I mean, like, he was cool with the cold. Like, bro, get in here and warm up with us. Like, no, I'm good. He just wants some internet. Man, but it can be so distracting, right? And there can be so many things in life that we've got to get down there and we've got to say, God, what is it that's getting my eyes and my focus off you? And we've got to be, we've got to be determined to pull it out and to say, God, you've got to be number one. It's so distract, it's so easy to get distracted and off purpose. Off purpose. We need to put in the work. See, I had a friend. I had a beautiful lawn. Beautiful lawn. Oh man, the kind you want to take your shoes off and rub your toes in. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, just soft and perfect grass. Around him, their other lawns were, were not that great. In mine, it just looked like grass if you mowed the weeds. You know what I'm talking about? Get out there and mow the weeds down. They look looks pretty good, but you got stickers. Don't actually walk in my yard without shoes on. It's going to hurt. And so I asked him, I said, bro, I wish I could have your lawn, man. That's awesome. Did you just moved into the perfect place? He said, no, man. He said, I worked it. He said, I picked out by hand every sticker. Like, dude, you're crazy. Like, I, I pulled up every weed. Every time there's a weed, like he, said, he said, you don't just go over a sticker with your lawnmower. It spreads it more. He said, every single one, whenever there was a sticker, I would pull it out and throw it away. And I said, nah, bro, I'm good with weeds and stickers. I'm good with my ugly lawn. That's what he did. He, he went through and picked out every one. See, we want a beautiful lawn, but we don't want to pick out stickers. Nobody else? I want, I want my life to be beautiful. Like the, Their lawn looks perfect. It's always greener, right? Well, because they're taking care of their grass. What if we took care of our grass? What if we did the prep work for the beautiful result that we want? Have things maybe distracted you that we need to take in and pluck out of our lives. People that have distracted you. Things that have distracted you. We're, we're so overly worried and we never actually lean into God anymore. Here's my encouragement to you. Even when you don't understand why, keep plowing. Keep moving. When life is hard, keep trusting. When life is busy, keep focused. We want the result without the prep work, but I'm telling you that the battle's not won on the battlefield, it's won in the training room. And so, so many of us, are, our faith is just too shallow for a real battle. But the, the, the bigger the battle prepares you for the bigger one the next time to win. And so I, want, I think we're wondering so often why we keep circling around the same things because God is still wanting to teach us the same lesson. But our hearts aren't ready to receive it. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, I just can't believe this person has so bad of luck. I said, no, they have so bad of decisions. Everybody has things that you can't expect in life. Everybody has a day of what seems like bad luck, right? But we all have decisions to make. And say, God, I want to be the kind of person that's prepared for you to do whatever you want to in my life. If God said right now, I want you to get up and I want you to move to Honduras and be a missionary, could you financially do it? I I don't know that I could. But is there some prep work that we need to do for God to be able to have the result that he wants to do in our life? If God said, I want to use you to minister to them, to change their life, Are we in a place right now where God could use us? I I, I don't know, but I'm just telling you. I know the victory belongs to the Lord. I mean, we we better saddle up some horses. Saddle up your horses. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go there. But you better get the sword in the sheath. Is that what it's called? I mean, we better get ready. Because God is wanting to use you. God has got some amazing purpose and potential. But here's what I think. Like the purpose and potential, I always love it whenever I say, you got a lot of potential. Well, that means you ain't doing nothing with your life. <laughs> they got a lot of potential. It's like, it's like saying bless your heart. 
Like that's what that's that's the southern version of you've got a lot of potential. Bless their heart. They got a lot of potential. Yeah, you got a lot. We we got so much God potential for God to use you to literally change the course of eternity for other people. For you to literally have the kind of life that shines a light so bright that people see Jesus. We have that kind of purpose and potential. But I wonder if because the soil, not the seed, man, he's he's planted in each of us exactly what he has for us. But maybe the, the heart's not ready to receive what he wants to do. And I, I just I just want to say, could you uncover some things today and ask God, God, am I ready to actually step into what you have for me? Am I the reason? Am I the reason that I can't step where you have for me to go? And God, help me. Soften my heart. Deepen my trust. Sharpen my focus. Because I want to be the kind of soil that's prepared for the 30, 60, 100 fold kind of harvest. Would you stand up with me? Come on, I want the result without the prep work. Anybody with me? I'm not picking out stickers out of my yard. I ain't going to do it. I'll keep mowing down the weeds and telling people to put flip-flops on before they walk outside. But we've got so many warriors online that want to call out everybody else's yards and not tend their own. Um, can, we, can we just say, God, work on my heart? Work on my heart? God, because maybe you're wanting to use me to actually see them changed, but it takes me working on my heart. Prepare me, God. Prepare me for your purpose. What if David would have said, no, nah, I'm not going back out to tend any sheep anymore? You know what? He wouldn't have been king. What if Joseph would have said, I'm, I'm not going to take the place that I'm at. I was put into servitude. I was put into prison. But everywhere he went, he said, he, he just, he saw God there. And just, he just worked the hardest that he could and did everything that he could with it. If he wouldn't have done that, he wouldn't have been in the position to be able to change the course of a nation. I'm wondering what God is wanting to use us for, but we're so hardened. We're so trusting in other peop other things. We're, we're, we're so out of focus that God's like, I, I have this great purpose for you. Like, soften my heart. Deepen my trust in you, oh God. And sharpen my focus. Because I want to be that kind of soil. Let me pray for you. Father, it's time that we prepare. God, I think if anything's taught us something this week is that if preparation's important. We weren't prepared for the storm that came in. Our area is not, was not ready for that kind of stuff. But God, let us look at our lives spiritually and say, God, let us be ready for what you want to do. God, there's people in here today that have hard hearts, that have been hurt, that it feels like life is trampled on them. And so now if they're honest, they're actually looking at you and say, I don't even know if I believe in you anymore. God, I pray that today would be the day they, they, they say, God, open my heart. Dig down deep. God, speak to them. God, there's people who we've looked good on the outside, but deep on the inside, we haven't really trusted you. And so in a season, we look awesome and we trust you. In the next season, we've abandoned you. God, help us to have full trust that you are our God. You are our provider. You're our provision. You're our sustainer. And everything begins and ends in you. God, and we got someone here that, man, we just, God, we've gotten distracted. We made life about what it's not. We've worried about things that in the big scope of things probably don't even matter. We've not trusted you. So help us to sharpen our focus and get our eyes back on you, oh God. God, and I pray that as we trust, you would grow our roots down deep. And come whatever storm, come whatever wind, come whatever battle, we are victorious in the name of Jesus. Because we want the result, but we're going to do the prep work. Prepare our hearts, God. 
God, prepare our hearts. As your heads are bowed, I, the main thing that you need to do, the first step you've got to do is prepare for eternity. There's scripture that tells us to be ready. One day, there will be a last breath for you. And one day, scripture tells us that Jesus is coming back. We don't know the time or the hour. We don't know when our moment's up. But we can live prepared. We can live a life that's ready to say, it doesn't matter when it comes because I'm ready right now. I'm going to live my life to make a difference. I'm going to live my life on purpose. And your purpose begins in giving your life to Jesus. He came, he lived, and he died so that you could live on purpose, so that you could live for God, so that your eternity could be in heaven. And if you're in this place today, and you're, you just say, I'm not ready for that. But you want to be. Would, would you just slip your hand up? Let me pray for you. I don't want anybody in this place. If you're online watching, there's a number in the description box. You can just text the word Jesus to 936 229 Four five five seven, and we want to pray with you. Father, just prepare all of our hearts so that we can receive all that you have for us. It's about time that we prepare. I lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we just give God praise?